Welcome to the Paul Martin Show. This is the first, and this is a show that's going to be highly practical because every one of us has relationships with loved ones. And some of those relationships are strained around issues of politics and religion and science. This is a show that will help you build confidence around those issues and help restore, save, and strengthen relationships with those you love. Welcome. Okay, so let's get right into it. Relationships are king and queen. Nothing in any study ever done on the subject matters more than our relationships. If you're younger, in your late teens or early 20s, you might not think so with family, but nobody on their deathbed talks about status or likes or or finances or status symbols or anything like that. Our mom and dad or brother or sister or our best friends or our family matter most. Harvard did a 70 by your study on this issue. And it showed not only that relationships are most important, but they also are incredibly important to our own physiological health. And so I want to start by just underscoring the importance of relationships. Luciano Pavarotti, whether you like opera or not, there is a remarkable documentary made by Luciano Pavarotti, and it's fascinating. This was a towering figure who revolutionized music in, as we know it in many ways. And, you know, his best friends were some of the greatest icons in politics and Bono and Lady Di and everything else. In the beginning of the documentary, someone's taking a video. It sounds like it might be his wife. And she says, what would you like to be remembered for in 100 years? And Pavarotti, and he's very near death. This is like the last video, says, I want to be remembered for bringing opera to the people. And then he says a little bit more with respect to his work. And then they go through the film, and it's remarkable. I recommend everybody watches it. Um, And then they're at the very end. They've introduced the fact that he has cancer, and it's the same interview. And it's almost like his wife or daughter was perhaps frustrated. And the question was, what would you like to be remembered as for as a man. And he says, and I quote, I wish I had been a good husband, a good father, a good friend for all my friends and people around me. Cicero said this, friendship improves happiness and abates misery by doubling our joy and dividing our grief. So point number one, before we get to the politics and the religion and the science, our relationships with those closest to us, those we care most for, are vital. They're the, it, if we think about our worst days, they're always about something to do with a relationship. And so I want to underscore the foundation of this show, which is about relationship. And I also want to ask you to subscribe. There's a little button at the bottom right of your screen. If you could just push that and subscribe to this new channel, I would be so honored, really. Just will take you a second. You don't get emails or anything like that. In talking about relationships, we must talk about technology. Technology is weird. I mean, we're living in an era that is unlike any era in the history of mankind. I'm old enough to remember when we landed on the moon. And while that was a massive scientific achievement, the entire world applauded this quest to put man on the moon. It didn't change the lives of anybody. Um, This, we can't measure how a smartphone or digital technology has affected our lives. And yet there's a great paradox. So on one hand, never, ever, ever, ever has life been more efficient. I quickly wrote a few ways in which our smartphones or computers make life more efficient. How we pay for things. I could send you money right now on Zelle or PayPal or Venmo or whatever. Um, Directions. I remember carrying a Thomas Brothers guide. Any of you remember those? Changing seats on a plane, personal development, weather, reservations, getting important facts, informed shopping, cooking, working. I am old enough. I remember seeing Rocky. I think I was 12 or 13, 14, 15, something like that. And I so wanted to have the experience of, I was very extreme, of working out to the music that I had my sister follow me along this kind of rural road in my 1974 Dotson pickup to the theme song of Rocky so that I could experience music and working out at the same time. I mean, that's how primitive I was in my youth. Now we just put on our headsets and off we go. So there has been this radical transformation. And yet, and studies show this, these devices isolate us. Like we could sit on the couch and order dinner. We don't have to see anybody. 
may be the guy that drops the thing off, maybe, at our doorstep. We can shop for a week. And so the upside is the convenience. The downside is social isolation, and many people write about this. The other thing which is interesting is technology saves us so much time, and yet how many of us feel that we waste time on mindless surfing around Instagram or whatever you do, right? And so we save time, we waste time. It's convenient in that it allows us to do things without having to interact with people, and yet longevity includes needing to interact with others. And so, and then we talk about, forget efficiency, just talk about communication for important. And this is kind of going to be the core of what this show is going to be about. I have a a sister, I have a daughter that lives in Boston, I have a son that lives in Berkeley, I have a son that lives in Southern California. I could right now FaceTime all of them easily. I could WhatsApp somebody who lives in Kathmandu or Outer Mongolia. Video. I mean, I play chess with people from around the world. It used to be that you had to like actually be with a person to play chess with them. And I always look at the flags of the people that I'm playing chess with, and they're from all over the world. When I was a kid, we had a rotary phone. Like you literally had to like dial, make sparks, and you would like hate people that had zeros and nines because it took a long time. So we have this radical efficiency, and here's the paradox, and yet how many of you have been offended, upset, gotten in arguments with significant others, loved ones, family members via text, via instant messaging. So I'm just trying to point out the paradox of the reality. Point number one, relationships mean more to us than anything else in the world, whether we want to admit it or not. Point number two, technology is in our lives. It has made our lives efficient. It has also made our lives a bit more complicated. The founder of WordPress, this is a massive technology platform, and I agree with him, said technology is best when it brings people together. Unfortunately, and you all know this, and I'm going to get to the heart of this show right now, this technology has not necessarily brought us all together. Mark Zuckerberg said this. He's the founder of Facebook, now Meta. There's a huge need and a huge opportunity to get everyone in the world connected. That's good to give everyone a voice, and to help transform society for the future. Technology, by giving everyone a voice, has not brought us closer together. It has made us more divided. Mediums, this is simply a medium. When I was a kid, I don't know if you've done this before, but remember you get two cans, and then you poke a hole in them, and you get a string, and and you you talk to your brother, your sister, and, and that string is technically a medium. It's an in-between device between a sender and a receiver. And through history, right, we've had technology, technological advances. It doesn't seem like it, but in 105 AD, paper was invented. That was a game changer. The press, the printing press, was invented in the 15th century, I think it was. And that was a radical game changer because it took power away from the Roman church. And then we have the telephone and the radio and television. But what this has done is far more radical. And the main reason it's radical is it allows the dissemination, not just of communication, but of ideas. And this is what I want to talk about right now. It has been said before that the pen or the pencil is more powerful than the sword. And it's absolutely true. Ideas are the bulldozers of life. If you think about Hitler, It wasn't the Blitzkrieg or it wasn't the submarines or the mighty force that he amassed from a military standpoint. It was a book. The book was called Mein Kampf. It was the speeches. It was a wicked ideology of discrimination against people. And so ideas now are disseminated very quickly. Good ideas and bad ideas. We could think of Hitler. We could think of MLK, who had very good ideas, very opposite to Hitler's, about equality. Steve Jobs had ideas. John Locke, Lockean social contract theory, is the one of the bases for which this country was founded on, really the idea of limited government and freedom of expression and ownership of property. Karl Marx had ideas. And so we are living in this swirling world. You know this where ideas are everywhere. And in the best case, talking about politics, talking about religion and science, in the best case, you have been frustrated. Somebody you know, mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, friend, worker, whoever, has been living rent-free in your head. 
What that simply means is this, the thought, I just can't believe they that they support Donald Trump, or I just can't believe that they don't think Joe Biden's senile, or I can't believe that John is pro-choice, or right? This is common now, right? The dissemination, the distribution of ideas is everywhere. So in the very best case, you're watching this right now and you're saying, yeah, I get it. Whether you're on social media or not, we just have access. I remember when I first went to Europe, I went to Switzerland. I went to a little, uh, the, the capital called Bern. It's a fortified city. And I remember hearing the term public square, but I had never seen it because we really don't have them in the U.S. And I walked to this bill, through this town and there was a public square. And you would see all these old men. They were playing chess and drinking coffee and, and wine. And they were arguing about ideas. The public square throughout history has been the place where ideas have been dis- debated and disseminated. I was just in Italy for a month, and you still see that culture. The public square is now here, and it's in every one of our hands, in every one of our minds. So best case, someone is living rent-free in your heads. Worst case, they're severed relationships. You have a relationship with a friend that doesn't exist anymore, a relationship with a parent that doesn't exist anymore, a brother, a sister, a workmate. And far worse than that, we see now ideas spread, right? People are being radicalized through reading about ideas on the internet or through social media. And so in the worst case, people are dying. Uh, One of the shooters, it's hard to remember which one these days, but the one I believe in Texas last year wrote a manifesto, a very young human being. It was a racist manifesto, and he was radicalized, not in a physical public square, but by the dissemination of ideas. So coming into land here, this show is going to be radically different from many of the other shows with talking heads out there that are disseminating ideas. And I want to show two people. Maybe you know who they are. They are wildly popular and wildly rich. Um, But I want to compliment both Rachel and Ben. Rachel and Ben are both some serious thinkers about issues surrounding politics and religion and science. Rachel was a Rhodes Scholar. If you don't know what that is, look it up. She was so smart. She was one of a very select few picked amongst United States uh, undergrad students to study at Oxford in England. Ben, go Bruins, is a UCLA graduate. He skipped a few grades in uh, primary school and has a law degree from Harvard. I have deep respect for both Rachel and Ben because of their intellectual capacity. I would highly recommend you watch Ben over someone like Joe Rogan, who, I mean, these people I don't think actually should be on the air. And if you're a Joe Rogan fan, um, I really think when we're talking about ideas that one needs to have a certain amount of training and sophistication. In any case, that's a bit of a um, uh, rabbit trail. Here's what Ben will never say. Ben will rant and rave about homelessness in Los Angeles and how how disgusting it is and how all the homeless people are taking over and how it's the fault of who? A Democrat, Gavin Newsom. What Ben will never say is something more nuanced, which is absolutely true as somebody who has worked in social services and child protective services, who has spent much of his life, life as a human rights advocate. Ben will never say, guys, this issue of homelessness is highly complicated because an overwhelming majority of these homeless people were severely neglected and abused as children. They were most likely in the foster care system. And if we're going to address homelessness, we have to address the issue of family-induced childhood trauma and poverty. Ben won't say that, but it's true. The reason he won't say it is because, I mean, this is the way it goes. I mean, Rachel is never going to say, hey, guys, you know, I'm not really sure if we should, you know, I mean, a bigger government means more bureaucracy. Big government is fat. There's a lot of waste. Rachel's not going to say that, even though there's a shred of truth to that as well. I mean, these people are very happy with themselves. And this is where we're at today, right? They're very happy. You have Rachel on this side. You have Ben on this side. You have CNN on this side. You have Fox on this side. And people are very satisfied. They create these horns. And and that's okay. You can create these dilemmas. But there's a more interesting spot. And it's somewhere in between. So I consider myself a raging centrist. I'll talk a little bit about myself in just a few minutes as I close. But there's a more interesting spot, you know, versus us versus them. You know, the Republicans are bad, says Rachel. The Democrats are bad, says Ben. Okay, there you are. Okay, you're done. 
and you are in your silo. And I think there's a more interesting place to live. And I'm going to talk about now why this show will be different than Rachel or Ben or Joe or Don Lemon or whomever. First, I want to help you think. Now, that might seem presumptuous, but I do. I think that we need to understand the ideas, a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of political philosophy. Take abortion, right? Abortion is the common issue. You're pro-life, you're pro-choice. There's your binary, just like Rachel or Ben. But there are ideas behind the idea of the concept of abortion, really deep ideas, fundamental, fundamental foundational ideas. What are they? Well, freedom, privacy, autonomy over one's body. Also, the sanctity of life. Is it okay to end a life? Right? These are like deeper ideas, which you don't hear about as much. You just hear about, you know, that's murder or that's my body. And there are deep issues to be discussed. So I am not going to lambast or castigate or censure the left or the right. I want to be your middle guy who's going to talk about current events, current issues, but also try to get us to think a little bit deeper without demonizing. And this is important. Every single one of you, know, if you're a Republican, every single one of you knows a Democrat. And, and they're not bad people. Hear me right now. You know that to be true. And vice versa. Every one of you that's a, whatever I said, like the opposite is true. People aren't good or bad because of their party affiliation. The same is true with religion. I'm a Christian. I'm a Protestant. I'm an Anglican. I know many atheists and Muslims and Jews and, and, and Buddhists. And, and we've got to get away from demonizing people. And when you know those people, you realize that it's not quite as simplistic as these talking heads make it to be. So that's number one. Number two, I, I said it, I'm, 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 a, I'm a true moderate. I'm a liberal Republican. I'm a conservative liberal. I am hated at times by both Democrats and Republicans. When I ran for Congress as a Republican, many in the Republican Party said, I'm a rhino Republican in name only, even though I am a classical Republican. I believe in the social contract, the idea of a republic. I ultimately believe in a smaller government. I ultimately believe in the vitality of personal responsibility over entitlement. I ultimately believe that we need to have a strong military or we won't exist anymore. But I'm also a civil rights activist, a social rights activist. I was endorsed by Moms Demand Action. Uh, I received their Candidate Distinction Award because I believe in common sense gun safety. I'm a conservationist because we all breathe the same air and drink the same water. So I'm in the middle. And I just need to say out front, I'm going to be up front with you that I am a Christian. I have great issues with any religion marrying itself to a political party. I'm going to close by saying that I want to help create and encourage thought leaders. You might not know a lot about politics. You might be a wonk. But I want to create and encourage thought leaders versus what I today refer to as thought followers. We have a too many thought followers in our country and in the world today. We plug in, it's like the matrix, we plug in to our silo, MSNBC or Anon, whatever it's called, or CNN or Ben or Rachel. We plug in, we have all of our biases confirmed, and then we go out and then we parrot that. I want to create thought leaders. By leader, I mean ones like this guy, Hobo Johnson. I don't know if you know who Hobo Johnson is. By the way, I just need to say one more time. Will you click the subscribe button? It would mean so much to me. Hobo Johnson is a rapper. He was homeless. And there's a song called I Want to See the World. And he says this, and I'm going to close. He says, I want to see the world, the world, but I, but I want the whole story. And if it makes me cringe and gasp and gag, then I guess that's good for me. And so this is a show in a world where we care for our loved ones. We care for our moms and dads and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins and coworkers. And at the same time, technology has divided us and is dividing us. This is going to be a show where we want to bring people together to do what the skeptic said, to suspend judgment, to look at each side, and to be civil. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I am so grateful, and I'd be really grateful if you could just click the like button, most certainly subscribe, and even hit the share button and share it with your friends. Thank you so much. We'll see you again.